What is up and welcome back to Freeze First Time where I document my experiential whiskey education one bottle at a time and today we're actually diving into the Chinese whiskey scene. It's a pretty awesome story about this video. You're not going to want to miss it. Let's go. Let's get into it. Now, as we know, there are no shortages of whiskeys coming out of Asia these days. We have Kavalan from Taiwan. We have uh, Bagpiper and Amrut and Imperial Blue coming from India and a whole slew coming from Japan. And a little caveat about Japanese whiskeys, their, la uh, their sourcing laws are incredibly lax. So the chance that you are getting a Japanese whiskey in that little Japanese bottle isn't always 100%. So maybe do your homework a little bit before you buy a Japanese whiskey. And of all those beauties, I have yet to find a whiskey coming out of mainland China, uh, or Wei Shiji, as they call it. Um, it's just a transliteration of the word whiskey. There's actually a lot of those in the Chinese language. For example, coffee, having a nice color on the sofa. Du sure. That last one's not true, I just think he's a douche. Now, um, mostly in China, everyone drinks a thing called Bai Jiu. And Bai translates to white, and Jiu is alcohol. So it translate direct, translates directly to white alcohol. And this liquid is ubiquitous in this country. You can't walk down a street without seeing at least two stores whose sole purpose is to sell Bai Jiu. And it's a distilled spirit from like millet and rice, and I think I saw peas sometimes. And, um, and if you've never tried it before, I would compare it a little bit. It has a bit of an aniseed flavor to it. I wouldn't say it's too far from um, uh, Uzo or, or, or Rock, Rocky from Turkey. And as far as quality goes, I kind of compare it a lot to tequila, to where the good stuff is really, really good, but the bad stuff is pretty fucking awful. So it's sort of like that, and you will find it all over the place. Restaurants that bottles and bottles and bottles of it. It is just everywhere. If you go to a Chinese wedding, the wedding is going to be at 7.30 in the morning, but on the table, there's going to be a bottle of Baijiu and a tray full of candies and loose cigarettes. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And I don't drink Baijiu, nor do I smoke, but I still think it's kind of a cool thing to see. Um, so, a few years back, Diageo, the major whiskey distillery owner group, decided they wanted to team up with uh, China's third largest Baijiu company to make a whiskey that would accommodate a Chinese palate. And they named it Zhang Shiji. And it is sort of Chinese. It's actually distilled in Scotland, sent over here, and then aged in China. And the way they age it, this is where it takes a massive turn. They age it like they age Baijiu which is in these giant clay pots. And the reviews I've read uh, say that it is quite underwhelming, and uh, it's just not worth the 450 renminbi, which is about like 65 bucks price tag that's been put on it. And you can only find it in mainland China anyway, so, you know, don't go searching. All right, now this brings me to why we're all here. Now, if you've never watched this channel before, wouldn't surprise me, I live in Northeast China, so walking out and buying a bottle of whiskey isn't something that I can do. And oftentimes there's a lot of fake stuff, and they honestly just want to make that dollar. Cash watch on. It's just, hey, whatever, don't we all? So, <clears throat> as I do, I will sit in my awesome white leather zebra print sofa that came with my apartment, and I'm just scrolling through my phone trying to find awesome bottles online that have been uh, suggested to me or that I find interesting. And as I'm scrolling through the pages, I come across this. That giant jug of whiskey is 95 kwai, which is $13. That's like almost three gallons, I don't know, two and a half gallons of booze. And I sent um, a screenshot of that to my buddy Ig. You might remember him as the camera gazing gentleman in my bourbon video. Ooh, let's go! Asking, oh gosh, as, as a joke, what do you think this tastes like? And then he took it upon himself to contact the distributor and mention that one of his friends has a whiskey review channel on the YouTubes. And um, they said, oh, well, in that case, we would love to send you some samples. So we're like, oh, this is going to be great. This has got to be hilarious. So we're waiting patiently. One week, two weeks go by. 
And the woman, I'm in contact with a woman on this uh, messaging app called WeChat. She says, oh, we sent you two samples. Um, send me the link to the video once you've uh, made it. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you very much. And she sent me the tracking numbers and whatnot. And then after about two and a half or three weeks, they finally arrived. And now I'm excited to try them with you here. That's a huge bitch. Dude, look at this. This is their free samples. They sent two of these babies. This one is the 40%. This one is the 41%. Now I think this is what they call, I think this is their regular, and this is what they call the black. Now I've asked the lady who I've been talking to as much information as I can. I asked her for pictures of the distillery, I've asked her for pictures of the barrel house, and she says they are not available to be made public at this time. And uh, But she did tell me that they are made out of uh, grains, or cereals as she put it, and it's, it is corn, wheat, rice, and barley. So, but the exact mash bill, um, she doesn't know. Um, and she did say they are aged in oak barrels and it's for a minimum of three years. So let's just get right into it, man. Let's just pour one of these babies. I gotta tell you, this is the first time I have poured whiskey like this. Oh, don't spill it. Ugh. I can smell it already. And just to give it a chance to open up, I'm going to pour the 41 percenter in this glass here. Oh, classy. That's not a solid seal. All right. So first things first, we're going to give it a whiff, and then we're going to give it a taste and, uh, and see how she goes. The color is actually kind of nice. Um, she didn't mention anything about adding color or anything like that, and I wouldn't think they would. I don't think they're at that level of production to where they're going to need continuity and color. So, um, the color is quite nice. It's like a dark apple juice. You know, like the apple cider that you would uh, drink for your health. Get a whip. It's sweet, it's woody, it smells very similar to a bourbon. Not a very strong smell. Got a little bit of a burn, a little bit of an astringent, if you really get in there. But it's not so bad. Yeah, not bad at all, really. All right, let's give it a taste. Come back. Oh man, cherries, wood, a little bit bitter, a little sweet. The finish is just uh, barely existent. If it's there, it's just like it's a bitter note that kind of lingers on the tongue, but it's it's pretty pretty quick. But all in all, it really isn't that bad. I mean, yeah, it really isn't that bad. A nice sweetness. I just wish it was a little longer. That would be great, but the sweetness is quite quite good. I, I, I enjoy that. And I'm not even gonna put water in this one, I'm gonna keep it neat. And to be completely frank, I wouldn't even order this neat in the first place. As a mixer, oh yeah, it would be right up your alley. But um, cool, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have a little sip of water just to clear my mouth out and try the 41%. Mm. All right. Give this one a whiff. Wow, it's different. That's for sure. It's very different. It's, this one's a little more hearty. It's almost, I almost smell a little bit of meat. Like grilled rare meat. Ah, more like roasted, roasted meat. What's the difference? I don't know. It's got a little sweetness coming through. Definitely some wood. Yeah, on the whiff, this is actually quite pleasant. I enjoy it. It's it's very subtle. You really got to get in there. Oh, no. All right, let's try this one out as well. Come back.
Mm. Black tea. Sweet. A little bit of the bitter barrel flavor. Much longer than the uh, 40%. But again, again, man, it's not that bad. I mean, don't judge a book by its cover, right? But these babies are really drinkable. I, again, I wouldn't order them neat. Uh, I would definitely put them in a cocktail, but I would definitely put them in a cocktail and I would drink it. It wouldn't be something I would turn my nose up to or snub at all. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Let's put a little water in there and see what happens. Nothing, just a little more subdued. A little sweeter, actually. Actually, a little more hot. Mm, that edge, the little sharpness has been taken off. It's a little more rounded and, and, and drinkable. A little butterscotchy, a little more sweet now. That's, yeah, that's not too bad. Let's go in for another one there. I'm digging the finish. It's, more, it's sort of like a bitter lemon uh, at the very end. That's kind of nice as well. They're very decent. Um, I wouldn't pour them out. I'm not going to pour them out. I mean, I don't know how. I'm, I'm going to have to share this. This is just way too much. But uh, I'm very, very happy. Thank you so much for sending me these samples. Um, your generosity is just fantastic. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, cool, yeah. Well, that's it for Freed's First Time. Come back next week and we'll, uh, we'll see you again.